Last week, we shot an opener to conference, uh, which I'm currently editing now. Overall, we did about 50 takes, and you can check out the behind the scenes somewhere here. This time around, we are going to be shooting another item for the conference uh, that we're going to be putting in. Before I set it up in Cine Tracer, I thought I'd bring you guys along, show you what I'm going to be testing out and go through it. Actually just received as well a parcel. I don't know if it's what I think it is, but it seems heavier than what I think it is. So, could be a surprise. Nope, it's exactly what I thought it is. It is the Magic Keyboard. So jumping into Cine Tracer, if I press Y, I can change to my man. And then if I press Y again, I can go to this view where I'm just like a floating camera. I'm gonna stick in this view because I want the departments up here. And I'm gonna create a parametric cube. Essentially what that is, is just however wide and thick and thin. This is just a faster way, I think, of putting things together. So yeah, I think about that big is pretty good. I'm gonna actually copy this and chuck another one around about there. I'm going to make it rotate this way. Bam. And then if we go here, I'm gonna push it against that one. Great. So now let's deck it out. going back and forth, kind of figuring it out on the job. This is the set I'm thinking of. Currently, we are going to be shooting both someone on the piano and as well as a vocalist. And then due to restrictions, we'll have to uh, get the both pianist and vocalist out and bring in two strings. I believe there's a violinist and a cello playing. And we'll have very similar sets for both of them. As you saw in our conference opener, this is a very similar set with a lantern at the top here, and then these um, small park ends at the back just to give some color, as well as a, a nice hair light uh, that's most likely going to be a 300D. And this time around, I do want to add possibly these light tubes on the ground, maybe, but I think the difference really with the opener and this one here is really going to be the shots. So for this one, I'm thinking to use the Canon C200, which I did use before, but this time with the 18 to 35, and with the DreamFX filter on the top. Ideally, I would like to use my uh, matte box, but uh, at the moment, I don't have any filters for it just yet. So I will hold off on that. I'll be using this and most likely adding a handle because I do want to go handheld and see if we can do a one take as much as we can. I do want to cut, obviously, because we have two uh, different sets that we have to cut to anyway but ideally I'd want as much of it as I can uh, getting handheld. And then just for safety, we'll do two extra takes. One where I'm on a 70 to 200, and we can actually set this up here in Cine Tracer. Um, so I'll bring out a new camera. This time round, we'll go for a handheld camera, like so, right about here would be good. This is most likely going to be me. And if we jump into, hmm, if we jump into this camera, like so, I want it on like a C200, uh, 7200, and just a slight wobble. I do want it quite close. So that is one of the reasons I do uh, have decided to use the DreamFX filter. Since you are so close, you kind of want to remove some of the blemishes on someone's face. So I think this will be a quite nice application for it. I haven't used it too much, so I think it's pretty good. I don't mind with this one as well. I'm gonna try and make the lantern at the top look as nice as possible. And if it's in the shot, I think that's totally fine because uh, you're gonna see quite a lot of lights around. I don't think it matters too much, uh, but we'll have to see on the day, or well, later today. Cool, I think that's pretty much the set. I'm also going to bring along some of these. These are the Cinepax split filters. I've done a video on it uh, a while back and I'm going to be using this possibly on the 70 to 200 just to make those shots a little bit more unique. 
and yeah, we'll see how that goes. It's going to be very acoustic, so I am excited to see how it pans out with mostly handheld and just doing a one shot from going from the keys as it starts off to slowly, really slowly coming out and then going to the vocalist as she goes and then going even further out to, the, to a wide shot like this and then going back in close to the keys and then panning up to her as well because it constantly goes back and forth and then um, we'll cut to strings and then it'll be pretty good. Yeah, this lens doesn't have any IS, so uh, I'm going to be shooting probably at around 24 or an 18, just so it mitigates a lot of those tiny little shakes. And I'll probably strip it down to take off the NTG4 here, as I won't be needing that. I'll just use the scratch audio from inside there. But it's pretty much the setup. Very simple, easy, should be good. Usually when I rock up to a set, I open my bags and just have them ready. So that way I can quickly grab something and um, get set up. I'm gonna eat my dinner first and then start getting things ready. I have about an hour until we start. Plenty of time. If you saw in the last video, I actually Got the same thing, Macca's again. I always go for Fanta as the drink and Macca's is doing this thing since it's their 50 years of Macca's. They are giving away this cup that doesn't have a solid base. It kind of like rolls around. It's so awesome. I got one before, I got one again for my dad this time. It just makes drinking anything way better. In terms of settings for the Canon C200, we're shooting in 4K, 25 frames a second in 8-bit, uh, I wish it could shoot in 10. Unfortunately, it doesn't, unless you shoot with the CFast cards, and I just don't have that many for the amount of takes I wanna do for this. Uh, we're also going to shoot it in C-Log3, and I just found out that the Canon R6 actually has a new firmware update, which allows you to shoot in C-Log3, and I had an issue with it prior, uh, plugging it into my monitor that the screen turned off, but now that has also been fixed, which is awesome. But let's, uh, let's get started. We're running a little bit out of time. Okay, so this is where we're going to shoot. I got this black curtain here, kind of fencing off some junk that we don't want to be in the shop. We got our small park hands on the floor here from last time. I'm going to move all this stuff over. So ideally we should have a black corner, uh, especially since we're gonna light a lot here instead of shining it through this and that's also another reason we're doing the lantern, so it gives us light going straight down rather than trying to blast our subject, which will also in turn light up the background. So let's do that. Tripod is the Miller, um, good question actually. Oh, what a great shoot. It went super smoothly, a little bit over time, but nonetheless, everyone did an incredible job. I think I got every shot that I wanted. The rig worked fairly well uh, with the DreamFX filter. At the first, when I put it on, it was a little bit too strong, but I kind of got used to it, and I'm sure when I color grade it, it will look a little bit better because it does take out a bit of contrast, so it is quite jarring to get used to, especially since I'm also shooting in C-Log 3. I didn't use the handle as much as I thought I would because I was continually focusing, but nonetheless, it was a good setup. I also did crack out one of the split filters near the end, kind of forgot about it, but also just wanted a few shots to kind of blur out some things I didn't really want too much in frame. So this turned out pretty well. In the future, I do want to get a new 
kind of pro mist, black mist, white mist uh, filter that's slightly more subtle and that way it can go into my matte box as well. But nonetheless, everything, yeah, worked out pretty well. Other than that, I'm going to go to bed because I'm super tired. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.